So this can be the final video using um, Autodesk Inventor to create an assembly uh, with exploded view as well as a parts list and put the render on the sheet. Before we do that though, uh, I did forget to put a uh, section view on one of the sheets. So I'm just gonna double click on sheet number four here and I'm gonna go ahead with the base projection and I wanna put a wheel in there. Okay, so what is a section view? It's like taking this and splicing it in half, and after it is in fact spliced in half, you can actually see a cross section of it. Um, what I will do is I will place the views first of all, and then right click, OK, Enter. Um, and I'm just gonna move some of these views out of the way too. Moving views is pretty easy. Just do a mouse over. Once you actually have that selected, you can just click and drag that and move this here. And same thing over here, I'm gonna move this over here. Great, you will notice I don't have a front view as it's not really required. Only put views for, I guess, um, what you need to see or what reveals best from your object. Okay, so let's go ahead here and I'm just gonna click on this one so it's selected. And I'm gonna create that section view I was talking about. So I'm gonna go over here and click on section. And so after I've selected this object and clicked on the section view, I'm just gonna draw a line perfectly through the center and it's vertical. Um, so I left clicked to create that. I'm gonna right click to advance, click on continue. And there it is, section view. I'm gonna have to move this, of course, because it's definitely in the way of my title block. So let's just go ahead here. And I'll just place that in here. Okay, so there's my section view right there. And so I can add all my dimensions here to get that intricate detail uh, as I illustrated on the other sheet. Don't forget to put all your dimensions in there. Don't forget your title block. And if you also do need to do notes too, you can use the text tool. So, you know, we use the leader to point out certain things, but you can also do general notes too. So I know that I'm using a fillet and all fillets are gonna be 0 0.123 inches. So I'll just note that. Of course, in all capital letters. And that's to refer to the fillet here, here, and also on the other side. Okay, so that takes care of that sheet. All right, so now what we're gonna do is create our exploded view in our presentation. So back to the home button, and we've covered parts, assemblies, drawings, and last but not least, presentation. So let me go ahead and click on presentation here. So the presentation, um, is gonna create kind of a multimedia little short video on how this thing can actually come apart. You can also, if you had an engine, for example, you could actually animate the engine working with all the pistons going up and down. So right off the bat, you can see that it's not looking for individual parts, but it's actually looking for particular files or uh, inventor assemblies. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this part right over here. Okay, great. So here's my part. And what I need to do is I need to actually go ahead and then start exploding this. So let me go ahead and click on new storyboard. And then I'm just gonna click on okay here. All right, so I've got my storyboard in here. Now I'm ready to actually create my animations. So what I plan to do is grab this bushing here, select tweak components, and you'll notice that I have three different axes that I can actually move this. So I plan to actually take this and move it all the way out like that. And you can see I can make it go, you know, fast if I want it to pop out, or I can actually like, you know, increase the duration in 10 seconds so it goes out super slow. I'm gonna leave it at two and a half and click on the check mark. So if I do rewind this all the way from the beginning and hit the play button, you'll see that it's animated. And you can see the timeline actually has that keyframes, and I can just take my little playhead and scrub this if I want to. Okay, so that's the first one. Let me just click on the end here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again, but with the other bushing. So I'm gonna go tweak components. And I'll have to take my view cube here and just rotate around ever so slightly. Click on this. And I'm gonna move this out like that. Hit my check mark. And let me just go ahead and just reset this here to home. Okay, so that's pulled out. Maybe it's pulled out a little bit too much. That's fine, I'll let you tweak that as you need to. All right, so let's take our next part here. I'll take the bracket. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take the axle instead. So let me click on the axle if I can actually select it. There it is. Tweak component. Whoops. Let me move it. Here, let's click on the X there. So obviously I erred on that one. Okay, let's try this again. Tweak component. And let me just grab one of these little 
uh, gizmo handles and place that right there. Click my check mark. And last but not least, let's click on this. Tree component. Move this upwards and go check mark. So here is this entire thing exploded, just like you would actually have for IKEA instructions. Okay, great. So that looks good. And again, if I want to play this animation, I'm going to go all the way to the beginning, place my playhead there. And you can see how everything is then animated at that point. So I could export this as a video if I wanted to. We're not going to get into that. But nonetheless, that's how you'd actually go ahead and do that. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to actually get a snapshot of everything that's been exploded. So let me go ahead and go to the very last frame. I can also coincidentally just grab my playhead and just scrub it to the very last frame. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to actually go ahead right over here and snapshot this view. The reason why I'm snapshotting this view is because this view is going to be placed on a sheet. Okay, so we've got that in there. Let's go ahead, save this. And you can see it's called Wheel Assembly, and it changes it from an IAM or a DWG to IPN. So let's go ahead and save that. Okay, so going back in into Inventor here, what I'm going to plan to do is I'm going to put this on a sheet. Here are all my tabs. And in doing so, I'm going to grab the sheet, double click on the fifth sheet and grab my base projection. So there's my base projection, but I wanna change this instead, and I wanna actually have this IPN, which is perfect. So I'm gonna click on open, there it is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a, maybe a scale change. Could be a little bit bigger. Yeah, sure, let's go with that. Let's see if that works. And now what I can do is I can kind of move this right about like that, maybe just a bit more over. Okay, that should do it. So from there, I'm going to add a parts list. That's easy to do. So to grab a parts list, what I plan to do is go back into my annotate ribbon, click on the parts list button, and then just click OK. And then here's my parts list. So unfortunately, you can see that it's probably big for what I have. Is I got these grips, and I could resize this accordingly on here. Okay, perfect. Now I can also edit this parts list if I want to. So you can see I got a bracket. I'm gonna actually double click on this bracket part and I'm gonna put in here that it is polished metal in all capital letters, of course. Maybe I should spell metal correctly here. Okay, so my axle, if you recall, was in a zinc. My wheel is a rubber material, and then the bushing is also polished metal. These notes can be anything that gives or provides more information or detail. And you can see that updated right off the bat. Great. Now you'll also notice that I have a whole bunch of different item numbers, one, two, three, four. Well, the neat thing is from my annotate ribbon, I can actually go ahead and then take the balloon feature and start tagging these objects that correspond the parts number. So I left click, clicked, left clicked again, right click, continue. So one more time with the balloon, I'm going to go ahead, left click, left click again, right click, continue. And let's do the same for my axle here. Left click, left click, right click, continue. And uh, I got a two, couple more. So I'll do this a little faster here, not to annoy you. Okay, so you'll see that all of these correspond to the items in the parts list. I'm almost done this particular sheet. Of course, I'd have to put in a title block, all capitals. Not going to do that because you should know how to do that by now. But I'm also going to put in my render uh, that I saved earlier. So in order to grab that render, I'm going to go into the Manage tab this time. And then once I click on that, I'm going to be looking for uh, Insert Object. Or is this on a different tab? Let's have a look here. No, not on tools. Oh, 
Oh, it was there the whole entire time. This was just covering it up. Okay, so I must have undocked this somehow, and that's fine from the annotate. So let's actually put this back here. That was a bit of a problem. Okay, so let's put that back. Go into manage, and here's insert object. All right, so from insert object, what I'd like to do is create a file or create from file, and then I want to browse to that file. If you recall, I put everything on the desktop for now. Yes, I know I need to uh, move it afterwards. Okay, so click on that. You can see all the different files that are creating here. And in particular, I'm looking for that JPEG. Here it is. And I know this is gonna be too large for the sheet. Good thing I cropped it earlier. And now what I can just do is just grab one of these grips here and resize it. Being a little stubborn. There we go. There's my pointer change. Maybe just a touch smaller. Okay, awesome. So I'm ready to save this now. Now, if you do have a prompt that's saying, do you want to save all the multiple files? Definitely say that, uh, say yes to that, and then click on OK. You have to understand with Inventor, everything is externally linked to the files. So if you were to say, send a client this DWG sheet, there's gonna be a couple problems. The first problem is they probably don't have Inventor, they're not gonna be able to open it. But supposedly they do in fact have Inventor and you just send the DWG, uh, the end result is that nothing's gonna show up because all the parts are broken from external uh, files and they're not linking to each other. Best way of overcoming this, if you wanna send these blueprints, renders and everything else, all these different sheets, is to actually create a PDF of your work. In order to create a PDF, it's actually quite simple to do but it might require you to install an external program. So I'm gonna to go to file, I'm gonna go print, and normally what you're gonna have here is you're gonna have a whole bunch of different options of different printers, uh, physical printers, but also uh, the ability to Microsoft print to PDF. So I'm gonna select this right here, and then I want all sheets to be selected. Click on okay, I'm gonna give it a name, And make sure it's in PDF format. Yeah, it is assembly sheet and then click on the save. This will export to the very, very same folder or directory of where the DWG and the other parts are located. But let's have a quick peek for that PDF file. And you can see my desktop is certainly filling up with a lot of different things. Okay, so let's see what we got here. We got the first sheet. We got a total of five of them. Now you'll notice that I didn't finish this sheet. You're gonna be required to do so. And of course, on this particular sheet over here, you're going to have a different part, uh, such as the bracket. And of course, you're going to finish this sheet too. And here's my exploded view minus the title block, which you'll have to do. So this is great because any computer or any smart device can open a, P uh, a PDF. And it's great for sending this information to clients. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to finish off this particular activity and submit it. Now, supposedly you don't have a PDF print. Couple things that you can do in this case is you might be able to download a third party um, PDF creator. One that I find that works quite well is Primo PDF. Primo PDF allows you to create PDFs similar to this Microsoft PDF. It does require a little bit of work though. So if I go Primo PDF, enter, I'd have to download this and I'd have to then uh, go ahead, install it. There are a few settings that you might have to tweak in here. I'll let you figure that out. Worst case scenario is you would have to send every single part, all the drawings, all the assemblies, everything that you've got, and you're gonna have to put that all together. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all this stuff so I don't lose it. And in doing so, I'm gonna put it into a folder. And I'm just putting everything over here just so I can keep track of what's going on here. Okay, I think that takes care of everything. Let me create a new folder. Just right clicked off the desktop and I'm just going to call this wheel assembly. Now let's grab all of these and click and drag them into the folder. Now it says it's in use. Try again. 
So what we're going to actually have to do is close off the program, make sure that we save yes uh, to saving and all its dependencies. Great. And then we'll just go ahead and just go try again so everything gets moved in there. Okay, great. Everything's in here. And now I can actually put this on, say, a network drive, or I can put this on the C drive and save this appropriately. So that concludes this particular lesson um, with all the uh, sub videos in it. Um, you've learned quite a bit in Inventor, and you can create a great number of parts. Sure, the program has other capabilities that we're going to explore a little bit later on, but this will be a great foundation for you. All right, that's it for now, and give it a try.